our mission is to uh, inspire people to learn from the traditions, the American traditions of innovation, ingenuity, and resourcefulness. And the whole reason we want people to do that is so that they can make a better future. So when you learn about the past and the stories of the past, uh, here you learn about the authentic stories through the authentic artifacts, um, but it's really the stories of those of people who have done really amazing things um, in the areas of innovation, ingenuity, and resourcefulness using those traits and characteristics. So we tell those stories, inspire people to change the world. Henry Ford, leader, inventor, and pioneer. He was working for Edison as actually an engineer in one of his plants in Detroit, and he had this idea for a self-propelled vehicle, and Edison encouraged him to stick with it, so he built it. In 1896, Ford built his first car, the quadricycle. That's not an innovation, that's actually an invention. So in 58 Bagley Avenue down in Detroit, he built this. This is the one, this is all original. After getting investors, he built a company, but it failed. He stuck to it, got another car, 999, raced it, went well over 100 miles an hour in this thing. It was a wicked car. Got more investors, that failed. And then he got some more investors in an idea of really building a car for the masses. And that became Ford Motor Company in 1903. He started selling cars, and he got down to $512 in his checkbook. One car, boom, sold. That became Ford Motor Company. The Henry Ford Museum has one of the largest and most diverse collections in the nation. By the year 1965, there were only three automobiles that had gone faster than 400 miles an hour. Now, this is a great, great story, essentially, of backyard mechanics. It's kind of behind the scenes, you know, down home kind of approach. It's a great combination of like high tech, seat of the pants type stuff. So, four Hemi engines, and it's simply, you know, it's a, speed, it's a speed record vehicle. At first, Goldenrod was little more than the dream of brothers Bob and Bill Summers. This car and many more epitomize the youthful spirit and determination of America. After 36 years, two land speed records return to the United States, and Bob Summers in Goldenrod becomes a speed champion. On the first day of December, 1955, Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat and move to the back of the bus. This is the bus that Rosa rode on that day. The Rosa Parks bus is the authentic bus. We have it here. We were able to authenticate it with some forensic specialists, and then we had it restored to the time period in 1955 when she was sitting on the bus and refused to give up her seat. This is the actual car that JFK got assassinated in? This is the actual car. And what's amazing about this, because it was leased to the government by Ford Motor Company, within three months, it was brought back to Ford Motor Company. All the body panels were taken apart and armored, and an armored plane was put underneath and it was put back out with LBJ riding in it. Same car. No man can fully grasp how far and how fast we have come. these cars could talk, I wonder what they say. We have one of the largest collections in the country documenting the American experience, and a great part of the American experience is being innovative and entrepreneurial. As a matter of fact, it's in the DNA of our country. That's how this country was 
was grown is through the great American spirit. And so we take the terrific artifacts that represent innovation and we tell those stories, the stories of people. But it's not about the past, it's about learning about the past, but it really is about the future. Using the, the collections that we have and those stories, we can help to uh, inspire new generations of innovators. We always say, you never know when the next Thomas Edison or Rosa Parks or Henry Ford or George Washington Carver are gonna walk through our door. And so, you know, we wanna be ready and uh, able to inspire them.